So it's been stated that the winner of Holloway Cater could earn a title shot. Now, hold that thought. I know what you guys are thinking. Okay, don't yell at me. Don't shoot the messenger here. Any statement is true if you include the word could, right? We could wake up on the moon tomorrow. I understand that. But make sure you understand what's happening here. Max Holloway and Cater, I do not believe, know the compliment that they've been given. Okay, look at what Dana White was tasked with. Dana White was tasked with bringing a card, moreover, a main event, to ABC. That may go right in one ear and out the other with some of you. Some of you may look at that and go, you know what? I have ABC. I don't have ESPN Plus or I don't love to buy the pay-per-views. I'm getting a free show. No problem. We're all good. I'm just sharing with you from Dana's seat as head of an organization. This is a tremendous opportunity. He had five, I mean, you got to hear this so that Max and Cater understand the pat on the back that they've been getting. Dana has 556 athletes, 556 athletes of which he can choose two. And when he looked at this fight to go on to ABC and be arguably in front of more eyeballs than mixed martial arts has ever been in front of Saturday. Three o'clock Eastern time in a great time slot, right? You have to ask yourself, what was he going to go for? Was he going to go for personal grudge? Was he going to go for championship? Was he going to go for something else? Because what he went with, what he decided in his wisdom to go with was exciting. He wanted to have an exciting match to showcase the sport of mixed martial arts to what's known as the casual viewer. So when he elected and selected Max and Cater for this spot, I mean, I don't know if they could be given higher praise. So then when you come on the back of that and say the winner could get a title shot, I think that that's very honest promotion because I do not predict that Max Holloway with a victory is going to get a title shot. And I know that's going to be sour to Max's ears. I just think on the other side of the coin, we have to honor and respect our champion who is Volkanovsky. Volkanovsky has ducked and dodged nobody. Whether that was Aldo on the way to the top, Chad Mendez on the way to the top, Holloway and Holloway again. And they talked about Holloway a third time. And by the way, Volkanovsky never said no. He did candidly share that he kind of like a little bit of parody. He's done this and done this again, but he never said no. And that attitude has to be respected by you, the viewer. I mean, right, we have to appreciate a guy that's willing to do it, but at the same time, understand that he would like to spread it around in a very deep division. When you got Brian Ortega out there, when you got the Korean zombie out there, I realize there's some red tape, but don't act like Uriah Rodriguez doesn't exist. Don't exa- act as though Zabit, Nomagacheriapov, okay? Hopefully before Zabit, Nomagacheriapov gets a title shot, I can learn how to say Nomagacheriapov, but I'm not alone. That's a tough one. So I like what Dana's saying because I find it honest. I do think that if Cater is to get a win, particularly in front of all these eyeballs, over the greatest featherweight to have done it, according to a consensus ranking, no disrespect to Aldo. No disrespect to Faber. No disrespect to Volkanovsky. The consensus ranking, and I'm reading it to you, what somebody else says is that Max is the best ever. So if Cater can go in and get a win, I do think that that is likely to qualify Cater. Likely. Not a guarantee, which comes back to the word Dana used of could. I don't think it's going to qualify Max. I think Volkanovsky's got some other stuff to do. Oh, and by the way, it looks like Ortega's next for Volk. Max has fought both of them, one of them. I just think they're looking for some parity. I think that division to the boys in the back are owed some parity. I don't want to take anything from Max. I don't want to do that. But if I am to hedge a guess, I don't think it necessarily pertains to Max. If it goes to Max, by example, who's a very young guy and whose number is going to come up in the rotation because I believe that the rankings have it right, I think he is the best to have done it. And I'm not sure that we've seen the best version of Max yet. I think with his youthful age, and not to mention his defensive prowess, everybody wants to talk about Max's offense. 
talk about how many punches he lands. Why don't you go and talk about how few punches get landed on him? But that speaks to the extension of a guy's career, right? Max is going to be around for a long time. It appears to me the right thing to do, which is not one of the things in consideration when we make decisions in the sport, I say that tongue in cheek, the right thing to do is to spread that around. I mean, if you give that to Max and you kick the can down the road, you just put Zabit on ice for six months. Zabit's done everything right. You just put Zombie in purgatory. Zombie who's done everything right. I really, I don't want to hear from you guys in the comment section about your ear. I, I get it. He's, he's in some red tape. He's in the principal's office. But that's going to go very quickly. And he's not going to come back marred. He had a whereabouts. A whereabouts violation is a violation, but in all fairness, it is the smallest and most lighthearted citation that you could be given. That's what he was given. So I don't think that there's going to be longstanding repercussions, and I do think that you guys would agree with me. It's been very few and far between that we've had 145 pounds in such a deep spot, in such an incredibly deep spot right now. It seems as though. The word could, by Dana, leaves him some room, but it also seems to be a very honest narrative to give to your audience.